Hey everybody, Patrick Tian, LICSW. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the episodes based upon the adult and the inner child. And in this episode, we're gonna be looking at bonding with our inner child and I'm gonna be walking you through a guided meditation. I was looking through the past episodes of, that, I've, that I've done so far and um, really came apparent that is the next sort of step would be to really focus on um, developing a relationship with this little kid. My mentor has this great analogy. You may have heard me talk about it before, but if you imagine yourself as the adult and you've adopted a child from foster care and that child has your childhood and they are now living with you in the present 24 seven and your job is to be a good enough, healthy parent to them in doing some relationship building. If that really was a true thing, like we, when we adopt a kid from foster care, we don't just sort of like, right out of the gate say like you're safe you're connected i'm awesome you're awesome that doesn't really work so it's like it's really like a real relationship building up with this kid um so it's sort of we're going to sort of like have it to be a process and sort of take it sort of slow and actually introduce ourselves and get to know this kid and that's what the guided meditation is going to be about and back to that analogy is you know this kid's history so you know that they need time and space to warm up to you so, that, so the, that being said, bonding with our inner child is also going to be a process for the adult. And I really want there to be an understanding that no one is going to be doing it sort of perfectly. And you're sort of a good enough parent for this kid. And it doesn't mean that you have to be omnipotent and amazing 24-7. But I do want to challenge you guys when you're doing sort of inner child work, that you do it in a good enough consistent way that you don't really just kind of give up and sort of put it away or something like that. Because what we're doing, most of the work that we're doing is we're trying to get the adult to be large and in charge in a really good way and show up for ourselves in a really good way and build ego strength and build our own resiliency instead of being sort of all inner child who is sort of running our lives from that childhood space. So a lot of this is sort of strength training for this adult. So um, the, the guided meditation is sort of, we'll do a quick sort of, you know, re relaxation sort of exercise, and we're gonna be doing some visualization through the guided meditation. And try to be as present as you can for this, meaning don't have your phone handy and don't sort of get easily get distracted and jump on your phone while you're listening to me to do the, the meditation. And if at any given time it doesn't really work for you, some people aren't really wired. They can be sort of um, sitting in, a, in, in, in calmness and sort of chilling out. And also some people struggle with the visualization. That's all okay. So there's no right or wrong way to do this. I would just say kind of give it a shot. And at the end, we'll sort of recap. So what we're gonna do is just do a guided meditation where I'm gonna sort of do some introductory sort of um, visualization for your adult welcoming your inner child sort of into your life or just having a little bit of a back and forth there. So here goes. I hope that this is helpful for you and we'll just jump into it. So the guided meditation is just about my audio and I will sort of put up a nice like maybe nature picture on the video itself. So we're just focusing on my voice and the audio. And what I'll have you guys do is like in traditional meditation, if, if you can not have, uh, if you could not be wearing shoes and preferably sitting upright or sitting comfortably in a chair. And how we'll start off is we're gonna do a quick body scan to come back into our body and chill out and breathe. So what I'll have you guys do is have your feet flat on the ground and simply wiggle your toes to become aware of your feet. Notice how, if you're wearing socks, how the fabric feels around your toes, or how the ground feels beneath your toes. And we'll take a nice deep breath, only focusing on our toes. And then we shift our focus to our entire feet in the same way, being aware of how our feet feel against the flat ground or if we're wearing socks. And we take a nice deep breath, 
only being aware of our feet. It's just an exercise of being in our body. And we take a nice deep breath. Now moving our focus to our ankles, our shins, and our calves. And when we take the next breath, we imagine that the breath travels through our body, bringing life and nutrients to those body parts that we're focusing on. Taking a nice, deep, loving breath into our body. And we'll take another breath into those body parts. Now shifting our focus to our knees, our kneecaps, the places behind our knees, and our hamstrings that travel all the way up from our heels, all the way up to our upper legs, taking a nice deep breath into those body parts. When we take another breath, we'll imagine that our body is filled, every cell of our body is a little balloon and it expands and releases with every breath we take into our body parts. When we breathe in, we are given something. And when we breathe out, we're in tune with our body's natural ability to let something go and being in that state of receiving and letting something go. And now we shift our focus to our thighs, the insides and the outsides, how our legs make contact with sitting in the chair and our upper legs taking a nice deep breath into those parts. And feeling the melting rise and fall of the air going into those balloons, expanding and then releasing with every breath. Now we bring our attention to our belly button, our hips, how our butt sits in the chair, and we take a nice deep breath into our entire legs, feet, everything that we've covered so far, just bringing a nice loving nurturing breath into those parts. Our minds and ego will want to go elsewhere and you can just gently relate back to my voice, focusing on what part we're thinking of in our awareness. Now we shift our attention to our lower back, our stomach, our upper back and our chest, being aware of our abdomen taking a nice deep loving breath into all those balloons. And 
and bringing our awareness outward to our shoulders where we store a lot of tension, down our arms, our biceps, backs of the arms, armpits, elbows, forearms, and our hands. We're just thinking about our two arms and taking a deep, rich breath into those parts. Try to note any tension in our body as we go along the way. We're almost done. Now we shift our energy to the base of our neck, the backs of our head. And I know it sounds strange, but can you focus on what your face feels like? How your eyes rest in their place if you move them around a little bit. Just being aware of your body parts. We usually carry a lot of tension in our, like the tops of our head or around our skull. Just note any tension there and thinking about essentially our head and bringing a nice, deep, rich, nourishing breath into those parts. Lastly, I want you to focus on your hands. And wiggle your fingers around, being aware of all the muscles and all the things moving around in there. Eckhart Tolle was talking one time about how we can really feel that we're alive by just focusing on one of our body parts. And if we wiggle our hands around, can you actually feel the air around your hands? Can you be that present to be aware of what that feels like as you wiggle your fingers around, taking a nice deep breath? Having covered all these parts, now I want you to focus on your entire body being present in your body. Most of us exist in our head space and our ego space, so it's sometimes tricky to just spend time in our body. It can even be uncomfortable. But let's just take some series of two or three deep breaths, just bringing life and awareness into our own existence. Here we go. So now sitting still and closing our eyes still, let's begin the visualization of connecting with our inner child. Imagine you're in a beautifully sunny day lit park with nobody around. Just a really beautiful magical place. Bright, perfect temperature. And there's one of those amazing gentle breezes of warmth and love swirling around through this park. And you're walking towards this beautiful old tree, this robust, huge tree that looks to be like 300 years old. And you feel compelled to go check out this tree. There's something there for you. You are the adult walking towards this beautiful scene, this beautiful tree. And as you get closer to the tree, you see the beginnings of your inner child, two cute little feet, 
from behind the tree sticking out. And as you come closer to the tree and this child more comes into view, you, you take a quick look at each other. And the feeling of this child being very familiar because this is the little you. This is your heart space. This is who you were while all of that stuff was going down and you're the adult now and you're going to say hello. So you ask if you can sit next to the child and the child says sure and you introduce yourself. Take a minute and just visualize that you say something like, hello, I'm the adult you, and we're the same person. Take a minute and just visualize that as you're sitting down next to this child. And this child is most likely either open to you or reticent or adults in their mind or sort of they might pray pretty right about it is that adults can be scary or they can need attention. However, your inner child responds to you is a little bit like where you're at with them. Whatever comes up in this visualization. And you begin to talk to your inner child to make this connection and you let them know that you are there for them if they would like to be helpful, to be a better parent than the parent that they had. And you also say to them that there's plenty of time to talk about it, but you let them know that they didn't get what they needed when they were growing up. The child might be wondering, how do you know that? And you remind them that you are both the same person. The inner child is your heart space and the adult is the magical being that can just make better things happen. And you remind the child that you invite the child to be a member of a new family that is just you and them. And you ask the child, would they like that? Would they like to be part of a new family with a healthier adult? Close your eyes. There is no right or wrong answer. See what they say. You can tell them that they have all the time in the world to develop trust with you, that you're going to try in a good enough way to show up for them and learn what they need and to just remind them of that. And as you look at your inner child, you notice that there's something about them that seems like they're wounded. Maybe it's like a scrape on the knee or some tears or a sadness that they need some help with. And you ask them, 
if you can help with that? Do you need like a band-aid? Do you need a hug? Do you need to talk about something? And think about those questions and just take a second to see how that child might respond. And if there's an answer, say yes to it. If they say, I don't know, I need more time, or I need this, or I need that, just say yes. So many adults just said no to us growing up. And lastly, if it's okay, you ask the child if you can just sit and hold their hand under this beautiful tree in this beautiful place. Just take a minute with your left or right hand and imagine it opening up and imagine your inner child's hand grasping yours. Children need healthy adults. And it's okay if that child is reticent, nothing wrong with that. And maybe you just sit with them and that's good enough. And just take a minute and take that in. Notice how the breeze, that warm, lovely breeze, swirls around the two of you. And the leaves in that tree kind of have that gorgeous sort of wrestling sound. You're in this very magical place that gives you a feeling in your heart of well-being for both of you. And then you ask if the child would like to come home and be with you. Hopefully that's a yes. It's okay if it's a no. There is a process to this. And now imagine that both of you are walking through the park hand in hand on your way to a car to go home. To connect sort of build a life together, to know that you're connected. And when you get to the car, however you visualize this is you can put the child in a car seat or the passenger seat, depending on how, how large you think the child is. And that you put the safety belt on them. So many times growing up, we weren't safe. And these little acts of safety are really crucial. And as the adult, you get into this car and you are now the driver. You are now the person providing the safety. You are now the person providing direction. But you can't do it without the inner child's feelings but we also can't have that inner child sort of being the driver. That's not safe for them and it's not good because they come from where they come from and they need some help. And lastly is you're both on your way. At any given time, it's important throughout your day in the day when you don't really feel connected is to imagine holding your inner child's hand or imagine picking them up. Imagine them being in the car with you at the passenger seat, thinking about your heart, thinking about what you might need. 
And lastly, we'll come back to our body, keeping this experience with our inner child in our heart, and focusing back on being in our body, being home, And we'll take three deep breaths. And whenever you're ready, you can come back to the room. So I hope that guided meditation was helpful. Um, really the two parts of it is I love doing a body scan and meditation to come back to the body. And I know that this sounds weird, but, um, every trauma survivor that I've met, childhood trauma survivor, um, including myself, we are really up here in our head and it's actually more comfortable being up here, but that means to be in our ego or anxiety or being hypervigilant. And when we come back to the body, it can be a little bit of a wild ride because we're so used to being up here. And being in our body and being in our feelings can be kind of uncomfortable. It can feel like like waiting for the other shoe to kind of drop, or we prefer to be up here, to be guarded, to be whatever. And I also think that that's kind of a bit of a human thing. But when a client tells me they go on vacation and they don't feel comfortable because they don't really feel like they're doing the vacation right, that tells me that they're really, they're really up here. They may have a, a really struggle with just resting, just being, having a day off without having to do anything. And the second part of the guided meditation is hopefully to start playing around with some visualization about really connecting with this inner child. Um, some homework is to do a similar meditation like this again, visualizing you can, if you're creative, if that the inner child is going to the grocery store with you or they're with you throughout the day, it's very helpful. Just notice how that feels in your heart. Notice what that does to your level of anxiety or being triggered is sort of being held, being with somebody who's safe. Um, so some homework is to do that again. Also some homework is to start the day with sort of having a one-way conversation, doing a little bit of journaling. One way meaning the adults sort of saying, you know, little so-and-so, whatever your name is, you are on my mind today. You're important to me. I want to think about what you need and I want to see if I can get that to you some journaling, some intention setting to just keep the inner child in your mind's eye at the beginning of the day. These are just suggestions, you guys. And at the end of the day, it's very powerful to just set a sort of, as you're falling asleep or something like that, to hug a pillow and almost kind of connect affectionately with your inner child. And I know that that, for some of you, may be sort of loaded, but just sort of try it. No one's bad. There's nothing sort of bad about it. You just really you're an adult hugging a pillow at like 1130. <laughs> um, but just to start to envision that bit of sort of connection. These are exercises designed for awareness of our inner child, some recovering of what was lost in sort of childhood or those concepts. And more importantly, like I keep sort of saying is to be able to get our adult in place. If you guys are interested in exploring more childhood trauma tools on my website, I have two e-courses available for purchase. I have the Children's Bill of Rights, and I also have something called the Genogram, which is available at patricktntherapy.com. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys. And as always, um, may you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be peaceful and at ease. May you be joyous. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.